the summer holiday mood, we have the Riptides with a new song, Holiday Time. The tourist image of Sydney is a city of beaches, water and sunshine. But Sydney also is a city of many diverse cultures and a city which is increasingly stressing the contributions of different groups to the life of the city. Over the past decade, governments have increasingly supported local and ethnic communities in their attempts to preserve and publicize different cultural traditions. But one community that has become increasingly visible in the past few years has had no such government support. Other festivals are sponsored by federal, state and local governments. But the biggest nighttime festival of the lot has developed without such support, even indeed in the face of considerable opposition. Today, a Saturday in late February 1984, thousands of women and men are preparing for Sydney's eighth annual Gay Mardi Gras. The Mardi Gras is a, perhaps the most important event for the gay community in Sydney. Tens of thousands of people, gay people, come not only from Sydney but from all over Australia to take part in the parade. And it's a, an outpouring of the creativity of the community in terms of um, costume and float design and all the other things that uh, go into making the uh, event perhaps the largest and uh, biggest uh, community festival of its kind in the country. So I suppose if we want to represent the gay community to our city, the Mardi Gras is the one event where we can do that. <laughs> We try to bring a little bit from the Brazil to make it warm here, <laughs> to, to be together, and we enjoy very much. Street, keep cruising on that boogie beat from the Oxford to the Beresford Hotel, the Saddle Tram, and the Oxford. It, it can't be ignored by, ignored by the politicians of this city when you've got 30,000 people, gay people and straight people, lining the streets from Town Hall to Centennial Park or to the showgrounds. They can't afford to ignore it. night you know like I think it's a incredibly joyous night and I like the fact that we're for the first one of the few nights we're a majority on the street early in the evening people start arriving at Sydney Square outside the town hall the traditional gathering place for demonstrations and marches Hospital. Come on, fellas, 
I think it's a wonderful night that people can come and dress up and often people who are frightened to come up can dress up and disguise and have a good night with lots of other gay people. It's also a very political night at that which 20, 30,000 people can come out in solidarity and flout the laws of the state, which all makes us all cr criminals still. Keep dancing, move your body around, keep grooving with that boogie sound. So even it's the same. Take a chance, no one to blame. Move your body with the rhythm. No, not isolationism. Feel the pulse to your fingertips. Let them slide right down your hips. It's so easy. A lot of the groups that make up Sydney and give the town its character wow. seem to believe, thankfully, that it's their duty to put on these great public shows, um, which all the citizens can enjoy. And and, uh, you know, uh, a little while ago was the turn of the, of the Scots and the Dutch. In a few weeks' time will be the turn of the Irish. Tonight it's the turn of the homosexual community in Sydney. And people seem to have struck on the idea that the best way to breed tolerance and respect whilst still maintaining the differences is to give the rest of the community a great time. And that's what's happening tonight. Um, the Sydney gay community are putting on a great show for Sydney. But the battle for tolerance and respect is by no means won. When the Mardi Gras committee planned to use Sydney Square for entertainment before the parade, the Anglican Church, which partly controls the square, objected that homosexuality is patently an affront to the Christian conscience. After the intervention of the Anti-Discrimination Board, the objections were withdrawn. Even so, the Mardi Gras is now firmly established in the life of Sydney. Things were very different in 1978, when the first Mardi Gras ended in more arrests and violence than had been seen in Sydney since the Springbok tour of 1971. This was particularly ironic, because the Mardi Gras was organised as a street party to attract people who were uneasy at taking part in political demonstrations. In 1981, the Mardi Gras was moved to late summer and has grown ever since. The first pro-gay demonstration in Australia was held outside Liberal Party headquarters in Sydney in November 1971. Perhaps the single most important aspect to the gay movement of the past decade has been the emphasis on coming out, on asserting one's homosexuality publicly as a way of combating stereotypes, ignorance and prejudice. The Mardi Gras has grown because it combines this assertion of being gay with a celebration of belonging to a growing and self-confident community, one that is increasingly determined to fight back against oppression. The pink triangle was the symbol used in Nazi concentration camps to identify homosexuals, and it has become the international symbol of the gay movement. During Mardi Gras, they fly along Oxford Street, known internationally as the centre of Australian gay life. But even if the flags are erected by the City Council, this does not mean that oppression and prejudice against homosexuals no longer exists. Everyone had this feeling that to compensate for being a migrant, you had to be better than Australians and more normal, you know, like I was even embarrassed to have different bread for sandwiches, you know, like the Australians had square white bread and I had Vienna bread and, you know, they're, they're all those sorts of pressures and being gay was like this big burden. It was like having bread that didn't look like bread. I think the, uh, the Mardi Gras is a great place to come out and it's an incredibly safe environment to be in. And to, and to publicly acknowledge your, homo your homosexuality. As you know, last night I was um, just on the train. I was bashed by four guys for seemingly no reason at all. And um, as a result, ended up spending three hours at St. Vincent's Hospital. And I'm really convinced that the only reason 
that I was bashed or that I was chosen by this this group was because they thought or they presumed I was I was gay. Because as they were bashing me, um, you know, you got the onslaught of puffter and faggot and name calling. When I've worked with migrant women especially, there's this real fear not only from parents but brothers and sisters that will sort of and uncles and aunties and grandmothers that will not only sort of get to you emotionally but also physically you know like a lot of young women especially say 17 18 have been bashed up by their brothers because they dared to be lesbian or let them know that they were lesbian and to pull them back into line as we all know homosexuality um, even, even in private is is a criminal offense and it's quite ludicrous to have this archaic law on the books the penalty for rape today ba -la 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 -la, la -la -la -la. It's seven years in old Long Bay, ba la 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 But if you're really causing trouble, ba la 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 Sleep with me, the term is double, ba la 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 This year's Mardi Gras follows a year of conflict with government and police. Despite several private members' bills to decriminalise homosexuality, New South Wales, unlike Victoria, South Australia, Western Australia, the ACT and the Northern Territory, still regards homosexual behaviour, even in private and between consenting adults, as a crime. Early in 1983, a number of men were arrested in a Sydney bar for breaking this law, leading to large-scale protests. This year, the slogan is, uh, we can dance if we want to. And uh, that has a reference to the uh, campaign over the last year or so to close a number of gay venues uh, up and down Oxford Street. And it's also an expression of our determination to uh, defend our lifestyle and uh, to demonstrate that we think that, uh, that our lifestyle is worthwhile and important. Uh, gay people, I guess because of their experiences, uh, the lack of respect that they're given in wider society, uh, have tended to come together to form their own cultural institutions and uh, they've developed newspapers, radio stations, they have their own churches often and uh, bars and all the other things that uh, allow them to meet with each other and uh, do the sorts of things that people uh, do in, uh, in, in uh, their society. And uh, in Sydney, uh, we have this phenomenon, this has developed over the last 10 years, and we have uh, a wide range of gay, what we call gay community groups, I suppose, and these are range from political groups, sporting groups, ethnic groups, there are women's groups, men's groups, groups for young gays, old gays, and the Mardi Gras is perhaps the one event in which everyone comes together. Gays live throughout the metropolitan area, not just in the inner city areas around Oxford Street. The Mardi Gras draws on the support of gay women and men from across the state. Above all, because having experienced a hostile society, gays feel a particular need to assert an identity and a sense of belonging. In the outer beach suburb of Cronulla, one group is getting ready for Mardi Gras. We should be able to be together in our own, what you might say, environment and situation in life, rather than go into one we, you might almost say it's of an artificial nature, which to some extent Oxford Street would undoubtedly be. I think it's important, uh, what Tom was saying, um, about having a group locally um, for people in slightly older age group. Uh, it is, we need something in our own area. Uh, we don't always like travelling into town and spending a lot of time in town uh, travelling, whereas we meet together and uh, in, our, in each other's homes as well as at group meetings and to me it's a very rewarding part of my life to be able to do this particular thing. To me it's a, um, a sense of uh, belonging to the gay scene without being necessarily part of Oxford Street scene and from that point of view I think it's ideal that the group participates in things like the Mardi Gras. Uh, we've spent hours and hours and so forth working on our costumes, working on what we're doing here now for the actual float uh, which will be on on the, on the evening. Um, you don't regret that time because when you get to the, the night of the Mardi Gras, as we felt the last couple of years, it becomes very exciting. There's a, a great sense of excitement, um, I guess, of, of unity, of to, a feeling of togetherness with people.
It's not really an Anglo-Saxon tradition. Um, it's usually associated with Latin countries or the Caribbean countries. So in a way, we're sort of developing a new tradition here in Australia by drawing on those things which have happened in the past. And it's very good for us to um, have that to draw on. It's a great bank of images and uh, structures for a parade. But also we're changing it to suit the local identity, if you like. It reminds me like when I was a kid in Malta, we used to have carnival for three nights, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and that's what we did. Everyone went mad. Boys got dressed up in girls' clothes. Girls got dressed up in boys' clothes. And we had floats, and the whole thing lasted for three days, like I said. A lot of my homosexual friends are from migrant backgrounds. And in a way, it's like developing an alternative community with that understanding that uh, we partially belong in that European ethic, or ethnic, one should say. <laughs> um, and that we have ties, not only with each other, but, you know, all this tradition and, and culture and art forms, all these things that mean things to us that Australian people don't really understand. The ethnic diversity of Sydney is reflected in the gay Brazilian group. Uh, when I did two years ago, my intention was to call the community to make part of the gay Madagascar, to help the gay community, to show the world that we are people like anybody else. And there is no difference between the straight people, as they call, or the gay people. And just to have a fun and to, to put the, the whole community together. That's, uh, I hope that next year the other communities, the Italians or Greek or Yugoslavian or, or French or Austrian, enjoy the gay Madagascar. Yeah. Just, uh, no, just do it by pointing. Yeah. What's, what exactly happened on Friday out of the showground? Them. If the Mardi Gras is able to draw in gays from a wide range of backgrounds, it is also a means of developing skills and self-confidence among the hundreds of people involved over several months of preparation. Get the gladys and leave. The, the Mardi Gras also raises considerable money. Uh, we always try to uh, distribute a certain amount of our profits uh, to gay community groups. And uh, we do that by, on the back of the ticket, um, we have a, uh, a voting form, a ballot paper. People tick which group they like, uh, they'd like their money to go to. And last year we distributed something like $8,000 to gay community groups, and these range from uh, the various uh, gay churches to welfare services, uh, sporting clubs, political groups. Uh, the Gay Mardi Gras in Sydney is the largest uh, source of funds in Australia for gay community organisations.
people here, that's for sure. Oh, it's great. <laughs> yeah? Fantastic. Having a good time? Best thing that's happened in ages. Just around the corner. So did you come down just for the parade? Yep, sure did. I like the lorries that all the funny things on it. I thought that was brilliant. Uh... <laughs> We're very impressed. It's the where, first time we've seen it. Where are you from? England. Is this the first time you've been in Sydney for a Mardi Gras? Yeah, too right. <laughs> I thought it was very artistic, <laughs> generally speaking. Great. Have you, have you been aware of the hassles that the gay community has had in Sydney over the last year with the government and the police? Yes, I've read about it. Yes. Do you have any views on that? I just think people should lead their own lives and provided they, they don't break the law, they should be allowed to just lead their own lives. Do you have anything you want to add to that, sir? Well, I think I agree with the views my wife expressed that everyone should do according to his wish and that, that the police or whoever shouldn't interfere. After all, uh, the, the state is for the people, not, not the other way around. Insane, take a chance, no one Move your body in the rhythm, no, not isolation. It's a field of the the Encyclopedia Britannica suggests that festivals often provide a position of strength for minority groups, enabling them to influence the institutions of the society and the culture of the majority. Mardi Gras is a good example of this. Mardi Gras, you can take a chance. Mardi Gras, On Thursday night's lineup, that's on Thursday evening at 7 o'clock. Stand by now for the world news with George Denikian.